So you're at PayPal's homepage. You want to log in. Put in your information. Click in the login button. Okay, so here are the tabs across the top. You want to choose products and services. This will take you to a page that tells you the different options for paying people and for getting paid. We're concerned with getting paid, uh, so we're going to choose, I believe it's website payments standard. See so here's ways to pay, all the different ways you can pay, ways to get paid, which is what we want, website payments standard. The pro version is going to cost you, this is the free version, which is what we're going to be concerned with today. You have a couple of choices with these tabs. If you're setting up a third-party shopping cart, <clears throat> you want a custom integration, their pricing. We're concerned with right here, sell single items, create a buy now button. Uh, this one is if you're doing multiple items with a PayPal shopping cart. This is for offering automated payments to people. If you want to accept donations from people, uh, this one's for gift certificates. Anyhow, let's go right here to create one now. All right, let me scroll up a little bit here. Okay, choose a button type, we want buy now. If you click down, here's all the different buttons. We want buy now. Let me close this. Okay, this particular item, this is where you put your product name in right here. This is for a friend of mine, a uh, secret potion cleaning solution. <clears throat> it's a quart size container. Over here in the item ID, uh, basically for tracking purposes, we don't need it for this item. I usually don't use it for single items. If you're doing a lot of multiple items, uh, blue widget, green widget, yellow widget, you want to specify them here. We're not going to be concerned about it. Next is price. This particular item is $12.95. So you put your amount in here. Choose the dollar, <clears throat> the currency here. We're using US dollars. You have the option for multiple prices for an item, uh, like if you're doing small, medium, and large, say in a t-shirt. Uh, we don't need that option here, though. We just have one price for all of them. The first option here, you have a choice of putting in a drop-down menu with, I believe this is pricing options, price and options, yeah. Um, I'll show you here if it pops up. There we go. Bring that down here. Um, yeah, small, medium, and large. So you can put in different prices for different sizes on a particular item. We don't need that. I just wanted to show that to you. We do need this, add a drop-down menu. This particular item uh, has five different scents on this cleaning solution. In this field right here, we're going to put in scents. And down here, they give you three options. You can add more if you want. The first one was lemon. Next is, I believe, bayberry. The third option was cherry. You click add option four here to get another little window. And we'll put in pina colada. And we need one more. You get five different scents. The last one was orange vanilla. And we're done. Click the done button right there. Now this will show you what the customer will see. Label for this is sense. Drop down menu shows their choices. Uh, you also have the option to add another drop down menu if you need to. Um, we do not. So let's scroll down to the next section. Shipping. It can be really tough to try and calculate shipping. Uh, you know, if you're on eBay or something like that, they have a shipping wizard. But if you're just doing this, it becomes difficult. The easiest solution is to either A, charge a flat rate like this guy has done, and this gets tacked on to the price, or you could just offer free shipping and then just figure the shipping cost into the price of the product. Um, we're not going to be concerned with tax rate right here, merchant account ID. If you have a merchant account ID, you want to use it. If you don't, which most people doing this starting out don't, just use your primary email address, put a check mark there. You have two optional options down here. First off, step two, I normally only use, here it is, save PayPal button. You want to save the button at PayPal. This gives you the option if you want to go back and edit the button later on, change the price, change anything, you don't have to go recreate it again. You can just go into your save button section and it's there. 
Uh, it also gives you the option to create a similar button. If you have one that's going to be almost like it but not the same, you just go in, change what you want, and save it as a new button. You also have the option for here, track inventory and track profit and loss. I usually don't do this, uh, especially with a single item. But if you're setting up a bunch of multiple items, you have the option to take advantage of all this. Let's uncheck these, because we don't need them. That's all for section two. Now for section three, let me scroll this back up. Um, do you want to let your customer change order quantity? Yes. Uh, sometimes you don't, but in this particular instance, if they want to buy more than one, we want to give them the option to. This will not show up when they're at the page where they're buying it now. When they go into PayPal to actually pay, there'll be an option for them to change the quantity there. Uh, can your customer add special instructions in a message? This is up to you. I always leave it in. You never know when somebody wants to tell you something, so leave it in there for them. and You can get information from them if they desire to give it to you. Do you need the customer's shipping address? If you're shipping a physical product, you're going to need this. If you're doing a digital download, just uncheck it. Don't leave it checked and try and get their information from them just because you want it. Uh, you run the chance of making them angry. They're wondering why do you want my information. You don't need it. I'm going to check this. This is an option to send the customers to a page if they cancel at checkout. Uh, I will send them back to the order page. Maybe they made a mistake. They're not sure how to change it. So I just send them back to the order page. This is if they complete the checkout and, and they're all done, everything's fine, I send them to a thank you page. There. Uh, the advanced variables I've never used. I have no idea what it's for. Uh, haven't needed it, so didn't really learn any more about it. If you want to, you can go look and see. The last step here is create the button. Click this, and it will take you to the page where it's going to give you the code. Uh, they give you the HTML code to place on your page where the picture of the product is going to be in the option to buy is. Uh, you just need to copy and paste it into your page. Here we go. Here it shows you what it's going to look like from the customer's point of view since the drop down menu with the choices for what they want. And here's the code. Hit select code. This will highlight all the code for you. Right click, copy. There we go. I will usually go and open up a notepad, paste it in the notepad, edit, paste, and then save it so you don't have to go back to PayPal to get this information. Now, if you want to change this information, you need to go back to PayPal. But if you just want to have it so you don't need to go back to PayPal and get it, save this as secret potion, buy now button, quart size, save it. Yes, overwrite it. I know I already did it. And that's it. You've got your button. You just need to go to the HTML source code on your site, paste that information in, and poof, your button will be there. It's a good idea after you do that, go ahead and try it out. Hit the Buy Now button. You don't actually have to go through the entire payment process, but just click the button and make sure it takes them to PayPal uh, with your information at the top, correct pricing, stuff like that. I hope this explained everything for you. If not, you can email me, and I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks a lot for watching.